you must think i'm nuts to be choosing to make my subscription appeal a day when i'm talking about something as morbid as the death of lakhs and lakhs of fellow indians and arguing over whether they were in millions they were in lakhs but you know what journalism is about doing the hard stuff it's also looking at hard facts it's also about sticking your neck out often enough and you are it's not guaranteed you will always be right but sometimes you go with your conviction and you look at the facts that are available that is called unhyphenated journalism and that only survives because great people like you great people who read and watch and hear and listen to the print they pay for their journalism because you know good journalism survives and good people pay for it so please renew your subscriptions if you are already a subscriber if you aren't please take a subscription we are not behind a paywall yet but we'll be there soon meanwhile we are building a bouquet of benefits to our subscribers so please do take a paid subscription because your paid subscriptions are what keep us going because you know journalism can't be done for free and if if people good people in a democracy like india want to consume their journalism for free you remember that old saying if something comes for free then you must be the product so you are not the product you are citizens you are citizens who raise questions and who want answers so i am trying to do that today in the in the context of his who report now who has said that india lost 47.4 lakh that is nearly half a crore additional lives in the years calendar years 2020 and 2021 because of covid that is nearly 10 times more than the official figures now we know in our country in any democracy you doubt you view all official figures with a great deal of suspicion as do we so if the government says let just about 5 lakhs died you might say oh government government counted 3 as 2 which means they may be under reporting by 50% or you might say government recorded 2 as 1 or for every death that got recorded one death went unreported right or unrecorded that's a possibility so you might say oh possibly twice as many people died you might even say that our government is so damn incompetent which it is in many areas our governance is very poor in many areas you might say they missed two deaths out of three in which case this number will go to one and a half million you might even say that they missed three deaths out of four in which case the real number will come to 2 million 20 lakhs to get to 47.5 lakhs it is like our government counting system our reporting system missed 92% of the deaths that means they missed say 10 deaths out of 11 now that is a stretch and that does not sound logical you know what i am not a statistician i am not a mathematician when i look at this who report and look at the document that they have attached that explains how they've calculated this and i see all those mathematical formula and sigma theta gamma it loses me because i was not designed to understand any math but i am a journalist so i one principle i have always followed is that all data i'm not a i'm not a prisoner of data i respect data but i'm not a prisoner of data so i believe that all data must stand the test of reasonableness that's why the first time the cag report came out 1.76 lakh crores of loss on 2g i immediately my bullshit detector went up and i said it's not possible because in the year 2007 to which that data pertained that 2g scam pertained in that year our defense budget was just over 1 lakh 60 65000 crores so i said the value of this much 2g spectrum that's the reason i have two fingers 2g spectrum cannot be 2 billion dollars more than our entire defense budget including pensions as a hone sakta because if that was the case then the armed forces are sitting on so much spectrum they don't even need, need a defense budget every year they just have to auction a little bit of their spectrum and buy everything that they want and i've said it again and again and now we know that all that data that cag had put forward a lakh and 76000 crore 
scam in telecom, a 3,30,000 crore scam in coal, etc., etc., etc. All of that has now unraveled. And because everybody took their data, because it suited them, with that, our telecom and coal and power sectors have also unraveled. We are still paying the price for that. In fact, some of that has also come out in the book that former coal secretary Anil Swaroop, who's himself a very highly respected for, former civil servant, he's, he's also been former HRD secretary, he's written in his book also. So when I look at this data from WHO on India's fatalities, and I'm using quite a bit of opinion in this episode of Cut the Clutter, which is uncharacteristic, but I'm also making the disclosure right now. When I look at this data, it looks to me like they've added zeros. They've taken liberties with logic while compiling their data in the manner that our national auditor had done in that period. And we know the price we paid for that because data should be authentic, so authentic that we believe it because based on data, people can make decisions and those decisions can go very wrong if the data was either flawed but usually when data is flawed it is not flawed by that much or when the data was motivated so we don't know what happened with the cag we don't know what's happening here we are not saying we are not saying it's motivated but we are just raising some questions about why it looks looks questionable and why we must question it and just because it comes from WHO, we should not buy into it. So before I go into the details of it, I will also tell you a little sidelight from this data. Now WHO, for example, has also told us the number of extra deaths that countries have had in the COVID phase. Now if we look at that data, it tells you that India has had about 171 excess deaths per lakh of population. And then there is data for other countries and you will see a couple of those countries, a tiny chart on my screen. But look at China. China, in fact, if anything, fatalities in COVID times are minus two. I mean, how does WHO explain this? Did nobody die in China? Or Chinese are so fantastic that human beings are made in China and they are so brilliantly made by the Chinese or by the Chinese God that many of them have come alive or risen from the dead because of the pandemic. So the fact is that they haven't found any data in China, but they don't have the courage and the spine or the intellectual honesty to question the Chinese. Because if they had any of that, they would have raised a few more questions about how did the virus escape China? How did the virus escape the lab in China? And how did the Chinese keep the rest of the world in in the dark for at least three weeks after they knew that this virus was contagious from human to human. In fact, two weeks after the Chinese had discovered that WHO chief himself and WHO itself in its tweet said that this does not have human to human transmission. So WHO, I'm so sorry with folded hands, your credibility at this point is not even zero. Your credibility is probably minus two like you say, the additional <laughs> fatality figures in the COVID years in China. Bullshit. I would have liked to use milder language, but nothing else works. The other thing that's happened is that in India's case, India has been ranked in a category where you presume that data is not available. So first of all, you have the first world countries according to WHO from where data comes and data is considered reliable. Then second category where data is not available, data is not considered reliable. Now what do you do if data is not considered reliable? Then you go to mathematical modeling because what's a, what's a few more million Indians dead, right? It's a third world country, or so just treat them with mathematics and one sigma here and one date, one delta and one theta or whatever it is. Now, is it anybody's case that a lot of people did not die in the second wave, the delta wave? No, it's nobody's case. Is it anybody's case that bodies were not floating in the Ganga, in the rivers? No, it's nobody's case because if anything, you can just check out the pages of the print, just Google. Our reporters were there even, even on boats in the Ganga, watching those bodies and watching those burials and cremations by the riverside, on the river bank. So all of that happened. But does that mean half a crore deaths were missed? Half a crore Indians dying? Half a crore 
is almost like the population of all of Sweden. Right? So just think, just think like that. The 47.5 lakh figure that WHO has given is the exact population, I think, right now of New Zealand. So that many people dying and disappearing sounds unreasonable. But, but yes, let's wait for larger, more authentic data, data to come in, particularly Indian census. But to say that because India is a country, is a dark nation from which no data ever comes out, that you might as well use some uh, mathematical formulae to arrive at an estimate is, is not very convincing. Now, India has had a robust system of counting deaths year after year after year. It comes with a lag, but it's a robust system. You may say it's not imperfect, it's not perfect, it's very imperfect, but if anything, it was imperfect 10 years back, 5 years back. If anything, it was more imp imperfect 5 years, 10 years back. Those fatality figures have generally then also been corroborated by our decennial census numbers. And sure enough, a 2021 census has been delayed, but the census will take place probably next year or maybe it will begin sometime this year. So those numbers will become available. But to say that data from India, data on fatalities or annual deaths in India is not at all reliable is nonsense because Everybody knows what India's population is. Everybody knows how India's population is rising, what the birth rate is, what the death rate is, and what is the net population growth rate. In fact, even today as we speak, NFHS 5 data is coming, which throws more light on this. To then say that we, we cannot rely on data on India, so we are just using math. And in which case, what has happened is, I'm still on opinion, and I will give you some more data in just a minute. In which case what's happened is that in the community of mathematicians and statistical epidemiologists, there's a great deal of bhedchal in my view that's going on. So I'm sticking my neck out to say it tomorrow. Uh, if this year's CRS data, if 2021 CRS data, when it comes out, it corroborates the WHO numbers, I will say, all right, they were right. And I will say, sorry for what I'm saying right now. But without that data, knowing that the data will come, and knowing that data is some data is already available, you classify a country of India's size, nearly one sixth of humanity, to say that we will just assess deaths in that country, in that dark country where nothing is available, no data, log chupcha, marjate, millions die like flies. I know that we Indians are held in low esteem by many of these uh, international organizations, particularly the WHO, or particularly many UN organizations who fattened on us and who get fitted uh, in India a great deal because we give them exaggerated uh, respect most of the time. But to again think that half a crore Indians would die, most of them in one year and nobody will figure out what happened is nonsensical. If you look at the data that's just come out on 2020, on 2020 is the CRS data, that is the system under which all state governments have all deaths supposedly registered with them. It may be imperfect. Government of India says 99.8% get registered. Maybe the number is 90%. Maybe the number is 70%. Maybe the number is 80%. But it is quite high. So it's not as if only 10% are registered and 90% are not registered. In any case, if this year, government says 98% are registered in 2020 or 99.8% are registered, you might say 71%, in fact, NFHS 5 suggests that only 71% are registered. But if that is the case, then the previous year, even less than 71% were registered. That was the pre-pandemic year. So comparison is again apples and apples. Comparison is again bananas and bananas. So if you look at the death data for 2020, according to CRS, it says 81.2 lakh people died to all causes in 2020. Now, if you see the increase of deaths over the previous year, it's just about 6%. And that's been the pattern in India, 5%, 6%. And every year, additional deaths have been reported. Now, why have those additional deaths been reported? It could be because Indians are aging and more people are dying. But it also gets balanced a little bit by the fact that India's life expectancy is also rising. So presumption also is a safer presumption to make is that year after year, India's CRS system, 
the central reservation system node or backbone of data is getting stronger and is getting more efficient. So between 2017 and 18, 5 lakh additional deaths were reported. So they were increasing. Two years before the pandemic came, 2018-19, 7 lakh additional deaths were reported. 2019 and 20, 5 lakh additional deaths are reported. So if we are now saying that registration is getting better, so maybe some of these deaths are attributable to that or let's let's toss that also let's let's say that all additional deaths are because of covid in 2020 even so since government of india has already said officially that in 2020 149000 people died the additional deaths will only be if all of these are additional deaths which is not the case but if all of these were additional deaths due to covid it would still be 5 lakhs and not about four times as many as the WHO mathematical modeling estimates it to be. Although all these 3.5 lakh additional deaths cannot be COVID deaths because in the previous pre-COVID years also, every year we had seen this rise of first year 7 lakh deaths, 6 lakh deaths and then 5 lakh deaths. So this, is, this has been a rising graph and the 1920 data is not very different. The graph does not change very much from the pattern or from the established pattern. If you say that 8.5 lakh deaths or 9 lakh deaths took place from COVID in 2020, which is what the, uh, which is what, what the WHO indicates sort of. If that is the case, then total numbers, number of other deaths, overall deaths, in India minus COVID deaths would only be 73 lakhs, which means suddenly in one odd year in India, deaths instead of rising went down. So what kind of what kind of elixir, what kind of amrit, what kind of ghutti that we put in our water supply, in any case if there isn't water supply everywhere in India or in our rivers or wherever, that Indians, so many Indians did not die as would have died as had died in 2019, 2018, 2017. Because if we look at the average of the last 15 years, the average deaths in India for the last 15 years to all causes is about 81 lakhs per year. So overall deaths in India, if you check since 2017, overall deaths have never been below 80 lakhs in India. So if this eight and a half or nine lakhs were only because of COVID in 2020, that means overall deaths in India were only 73 lakhs. That is, does it sound reasonable? That's the reason. No, I have also managed companies, uh, a big one like the Indian Express for 13 years as its chief executive. And now a small one, a startup like this, uh, like the print. And I have lived my life and I would say not unsuccessfully by being skeptical, by being deeply skeptical of Excel sheets and spreadsheets. Because when I look at data, I look at it like, does it make sense to me? Because data can be very misleading. How you see data can also be misleading. So once again, be reasonable. Could it be that, okay, 2020, you might say that 9 lakh people died of COVID, not one and a half as government of India says. If that is the case, then how do you explain that in 2020, only 73 lakh people died? That is nearly 10 lakh or 8, or 8 to 10 lakh less than India's usual annual deaths. Does not stand the test of reasonableness. That's all I would say. Then... WHO data suggests that 39.1 lakh people died in 2021. This is quite a remarkable number because that would say that that number would mean that India in that year lost 4 lakh more lives to COVID than the rest of the world did. Of course, Chinese are not dying and Chinese, if any case, are coming back from the dead. So there is more Chinese because of COVID instead of less Chinese because of COVID because it's China after all, they make their own rules. Now I take wisdom from where I can. And one of those pieces of wisdom I picked today is from an article in the Indian Express written by my former colleague Amitabh Sina, who I think the world of. So Amitabh Sina has analyzed some data and after that I got Nikhil Rampal, who's our young data journalist, also to look at more data. So what Amitabh has done and, direct, and that's how he skewed us in that direction. He's looked at 
the number of deaths declared or claimed or registered or officially stated by each state of india india has 35 states and union territories 35 important states and union territories now what he's done is he's just picked up 11 major ones 11 major ones where a bulk of india's deaths have taken place or bulk of india's fatalities have been officially reported when he looks at those 11 states he has now compared them with the death figure the official death figure of the state and the claims filed by families for compensation now you remember the supreme court had intervened and they had said that government of india has to give a compensation a small one but not so small if you are a poor family which is most of india of 50000 rupees to any family that lost a member because of covid so families are filing their claims this is a supreme court monitored process and this is going on like that and there are periodic updates available so because we saw this data in amitabh's article we had nikhil rampal look at the supreme court data and he found the data until 3rd of feb so if you look at the data until 3rd of feb what does it tell you it tell you that in all of india until until the 3rd of feb of the 499010 deaths accepted by the governments by the various state governments all together 738962 applications claims had been filed that means 50% more claims had been filed than deaths accepted by government of india by various state governments of india compiled by the central government death data crs is run by the states not by the center so maybe governments either concealed the data of another 2 and a half lakh dead or maybe a 2 and a half an additional 2 and a half lakh dead went unreported applications are still coming in so you can say okay more applications will come in more will come in because this is india it's very unlikely barring families which are very well to do you can say that's 10% of the families i am exa- exaggerating now just to just to be sure and to be hopefully safe maybe 10% families don't think it's worth their while 10% families who lost somebody it's not worth my while to fill up those forms uh, and wait for my 50000 rupee check to come from government of india even though supreme court of india is now ensuring that but do you imagine that 9 out of 10 indian families who lost a member will not do it that sounds unlikely so maybe this number of claims will go to a million which means government of india underestimated or the systems under registered deaths by half but to say that they underestimated to the extent of 10 out of 11 does not sound convincing in fact there is no data to justify that and who also does not have data they have statistics they have statistics formulae and they begun with the presumption that data from india will not be available or data from india will not come or data from india will not be reliable if you look at the if you look at the table from the indian express what amitabh has done is he has taken the key states so i will tell you the state which which looks like the most delinquent and surprise of surprises that state is gujarat so in gujarat so the state has claimed 16943 dead but the state has got claim applications from 1,21,271 families which means the undercount of the dead in that state if you go by the claims data could be to the extent of 9.7% almost 10 times now you would say that oh you have this gujarat data now you are ext- now you extrapolate that to all of the country then you will then you will know that who is right that means all deaths have been underestimated under reported under accepted by the by 90 plus percent so our point is made who is right qed you sit down shekhar gupta but that is not the case because you go to other more popular states you go to uttar pradesh for example official data this is until the last day this data was available 46894 deaths government data claims filed 43925 so this is fewer now you might say some people are richer or you might say that some people are so illiterate or maybe so poor that they haven't had the wherewithal to file these 
uh, claims but once again if if the numbers were underestimated to the extent that you think they are then a lot more claims would have been filed and different states then have different kinds of discrepancies if you look at andhra pradesh three times more claims have been filed than the deaths reported by the government odisha twice as many then you have many other states which are about two times or 1.6 times but no other state goes into that category and if you then come to a state which has actually declared quite a large number of uh, deaths that is kerala which has continued to pull out data on the dead even now they keep on doing it other states do it on a periodic basis kerala does it almost almost regularly then if you look at data that will also tell you kerala for example says officially that 69000 or about 70000 people have died whereas about 67000 claims have been filed now kerala also is a very highly literate state so once again to think that 9 out of 10 are not are now 9 out of 10 indians are so poor so illiterate so dumb such idiots i'm sorry to use that expression that they will they will not even bother to go to the government and claim 50000 rupees because somebody in their family died you have no idea of how real life works because statistics can then just be confusing india is too complex and india is too open a country i know that we curse our country all the time ye khatam ho gaya wo khatam ho gaya and there are many problems there are many problems on the on our freedoms there are many pressures on the media but to think to treat india like a north korea is nonsensical now just in passing i mel- i'll mention a couple more things one this business of covid deaths has been politicized much too heavily in india and i saw today a tweet by rahul gandhi saying that see science is right modi ji tells lies or something like that you will see that tweet on the screen now it's all right for an opposition leader to say that but i have a counter question look at the states in india all these data is with the state center does not control this data so center may lie modi ji may lie but the fact is large populous states rajasthan chatisgarh even punjab until a couple of months back these were all under the congress why didn't those states give data that is different from other states if you look at punjab for example punjab has only reported about 18000 dead if you look at rajasthan rajasthan has reported less than 10000 dead if these deaths were being missed to the, to, to the extent of 10 is to 1 then rajasthan punjab chatisgarh maharashtra where the opposition is in power and congress is part of the government tamil nadu where the opposition is in power kerala where the opposition is in power west bengal those states would have recorded reported much higher numbers kcr in telangana jagan in andhra you can say they are all complicit with the bjp and modi ji that's also possible that's at least for argument sake you can say that but are you then saying that your own chief ministers were also complicit with modi ji in fixing the same data so once again we have to look at things carefully and look at things and just as we can't let sheer statistics or statistical formulae cloud our judgment when it comes to reasonableness and logic we should also not let politics cloud our judgment when it comes to counting our dead fellow compatriots and finally a word for the modi government and i told you today there'll be a fair bit of opinion here that is be careful when you start celebrating certificates from international agencies global bodies particularly un bodies and saying un so and so unesco so and so unicef so and so who so and so because then you don't know when it turns on you so what's happened with the who right now if i may use a punjabi metaphor of wisdom it's like in, P- in punjabi they it say sajna ne phul mareya sadi ru amran tak roi which means my lover struck me with a mere flower bud and my heart cried to the heavens so it's the same who which has been giving certificates to modi government and everybody has have been celebrating and now what have they done they now delivered a one two punch on the modi government first by withdrawing their clearance for covaxin and saying rude things about it and second uh, with this report so once again be careful because some of these certificates from these agencies can also come with downsides